Welcome to the Rise of the Trades podcast, the show dedicated to helping you to build, grow, and scale your trades or construction business. All rise for your host, Craig Wilkinson. Welcome to this week's coaching episode of the Rise of the Trades podcast, where we help trades and construction business owners to skyrocket leads, explode net profits without having to graft 60 hours a week and becoming that busy fool. In this episode, I'm going to be teaching you how to build a business brand that generates your leads in three simple steps. But before we go there, I want to say a massive thank you and a shout out to the army of businesses and business owners that are now joining our Thriving and Safe Trades Freedom Club Facebook group and community. People such as Dan A. Smith from DTL Building and Plastering, Gavin Moore from The Blinds Experts and Richard Holton from Prohas Health and Safety, who have all been messaging me saying how this podcast is transforming the way in which they're running their businesses and how it's massively benefiting the growth of themselves and their businesses. So, If you are still not a member of our Facebook group and community, please click the link within the description and show notes, head over to our Facebook group and come and join thousands of positive tradesmen and women that we're helping to support and help to grow your business. Now, let's transition over to this week's coaching episode. People often say to me, Craig, how the hell do you generate the amount of leads that you get for your businesses? And how do you get your branding nailed on? Because we love the names of your businesses. The logos and the branding around them are brilliant. And you personally, Craig, you just seem to be everywhere. And we're just drawn like a magnet to you and your businesses. So how do you do this? Well, in this episode, I'm going to teach you these three parts of branding that you need to get absolutely nailed on if you want to start to turn people on and not turn people off with your brands. Because I'm telling you now that the vast majority of people that are listening to this episode, your brands will be turning people off, not turning people on. And the reason why is you don't understand the value and the concept of how powerful your branding is when it forms part of your marketing strategy. Because what we have to understand is whatever you present or put in front of people, image-wise, name-wise, brand-wise, they are going to make a judgment call, whether that's right or wrong, on you and your business by the content that you are presenting in front of people. And when people say to me, Craig, I need your help. I'm not generating leads. What's going wrong? A lot of the times they want me to come back and say, well, your social media strategy is wrong. And it might be. Or they want to, or they want me to come back and say, pick spots off the website and that they haven't got the 16 killer features that you need on your website to turn it into an inquiry generating machine. Oh, by the way, if you haven't listened to episode number 16, I suggest at the end of this episode, you go back and listen to it because I share what the 16 killer features are that you need on your website to turn it into an inquiry generating machine. So that's episode number 16. And I say to him, look, I'll look at everything, but we have to start at the beginning of the customer journey. And the beginning of the customer journey always starts off with your branding. Because it's your branding that's out there and it's your branding that people are looking at. And if your brand is wrong or it's not quite right or it doesn't align with you and your business, then you're actually turning people off before you've had a chance to turn people on. Now, I understand the value in me investing time, effort and money 
into creating world-class brands because the world-class brands and the content that we put out there then give people the impression that we want to give them and emotionally connect with them so that they inquire or leave a lead with us. Are you with me? But for some of you, although you don't know it yet, and I'm hoping by the time we get to the end of this episode, you're going to have enough information to make this decision. But for some of you, your brands will be awful. And you don't realise it, but you're actually turning people off by what you are presenting in front of people and you're not turning them on. So that's what we're going to uncover in this episode. Now, I'm going to be breaking and segmenting this down into three parts. Part number one is your business brand. Part number two is your personal brand. And part number three is your brand authority. So grab your notepads, grab your pens, get your tablets, as I normally ask you to do, and let's get stuck in. And I want you making plenty of notes. Now, it doesn't matter whether you are a new business or considering setting up your business or you are an established business and you've had your name and your brand for years. This episode is going to get you to challenge your thought process, your actual brand, where you're going, what business is all about, how your business ideas and vision are now tying into your business brand. It's going to make you want to question lots and lots of different things. And that's exactly what it's designed for. Because if you're just starting out on your journey and you're an early doors business, or you're just thinking or considering setting up a business, then this episode is going to save you years and years of pain and hassle that you're going to come across by not listening to this. For the people that have got an established business, I want you to have an open mindset around what I'm going to share with you. Because you've got an established business that is your baby. And your business has already got a brand. And over these months or for many of your years or even decades, your baby, your business, your brand, you've come up with, you've nurtured it, you've grown it, you've looked after it, you've loved it. So therefore, you are emotionally connected to your business name, your branding and everything. It's you, it's in your DNA, it's your baby, right? So when someone like me comes across and starts challenging you on things, what I don't want you to do is putting the defences up and going, Craig, I've had this brand for God knows how many years, I'm not changing it, I'm not doing anything with it, my customers know me, my suppliers know me, everybody knows me, has been this brand, you're not going to get me to change your mind, right? What I'm saying is this, please have an open mindset because we cover a full month of branding on my Inner Circle Marketing and Business Coaching Programme. And everybody that joins my program that comes into this particular month, they all start off with a mindset that I've got this name, I've got this business, I've got this brand, it's it's great, I've had it for years, I love it, Craig, I'm not changing it. And by the time we get to the end of that full month's coaching, I would say that at least a third, at least three out of ten people go away and rebrand. Now, I'm not telling you, you've got to rebrand. Far from it. It's your business. It's your baby. You do what you please with it. What I'm here to do is challenge you to say, have you got the right brand based on where you are now and the direction that you are taking your business in? And if at the end of this podcast, it makes you question anything to do with your business name or your brand or anything, and you're questioning, "Mm, do you know what, he might have got a point, then now is the time to look at possibly rebranding before you invest any more time, effort or money into a brand that's disconnected and miles away from your business and what you are now offering. Are you with me? So all I'm saying is, please, Have an open mind. I'm not telling anyone they've got a rebrand. I'm just saying at the end of this 
episode, take on board and take stock of what I'm saying, and then you go and make your own judgment call on your own business based on the questions I'm going to throw up. So let's start with step number one of the three steps, and that is your business brand. Okay, your business brand. Now, what I mean by your business brand are things such as the name of the business, the logo or the symbol that you might be using, the fonts, the colours, the strap line. It's the business brand. It's the business identity. It's the business's hallmark of who you are. And that's what I'm talking about when I talk about a business or a company brand. It's your identity. And what I want to run you through now is, is your brand identity right for the direction in which your business is heading? Or if you're listening to this and you are just setting up a business, you need to make plenty of notes, right? And what I mean is, cast your mind back to day one of when you very first set up your business. And for people like me, that's 31 years ago now, so it were a long time. For you, it could be months, it could be years, it could be decades, but cast your mind back to dot, day dot number one. And here's what I'm going to suggest was going through your mind. You're all excited. You're going to set up this business. You're going to become a millionaire. You're going to have all this time on your hands. Nothing's going to stop you in your tracks. You're going to be mega successful and all this. And although it's daunting, it's exciting. But the first thing we've got to do is we've got to come up with an identity. And what that generally means is coming up with a business name, a logo, some fonts, some colours, a symbol, that pulls together to form your company brand. And your company business brand then goes everywhere, doesn't it? It goes on your vans, it goes on your A boards, your scaffolding signs, your embroidered polo shirts, it's on your websites, your leaflets, your letterheads, it goes everywhere. Now, when you first set up your business, however long that was, you were very inexperienced when it came to marketing, never mind branding. I mean, branding's a completely separate animal to marketing, but either way, you are not experienced when it comes to building a brand. You are not experienced when it comes to marketing, right? And therefore, you have got no idea of the power of branding and how important it is. And the first thing we decide to do is, well, hang on a minute, we need a business name, don't we? What we're going to call our business. So you come up with a series of random names and you share them with your family and your friends and you ask people, you know, what do you think to these names? Bearing in mind the people that you are asking are, are not on experts, neither, right? So you're asking the wrong people. And then eventually you come up with a name. And you know what? Most people that we brand under my marketing agency called Leadzilla, most of the people that we rebrand, we say, how did you come up with that name? And they'll say, well, it's it's my initials, Craig. It's my, it's my initials of my name. So I've come up with initials. Or it's the initials of each one of my kids or my husband or my wife, and I've pulled this name and this acronym together. Or it's the name of my pet. Or it's the name of the road that I've set my business up on. Or it's the name of my favourite film. Trust me, I've heard them all. And I'm like, what? What? You've come up with a name based on your pet or your kid's initials. Now, remember, remember what I said at the beginning of this podcast. You are emotionally attached to your business. So if your business is named after your kids, I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong. What I'm saying is I don't believe personally that's the right way to go. But you're emotionally attached to it and maybe you've done the same. And that's fine. I did to start off with years and years ago. Our Craig Wilkinson joiner and building contractor before I, I got into branding. 
once they understood the power of branding, I'm like, nobody's ever going to remember that name. That name doesn't wow me. That name doesn't stand out. That name doesn't set me on fire. That name doesn't want me to work with a company just because they've used their initials in it. In fact, most businesses that have initials in their name, you can't remember them. C-J-L-P-M-R-C-W. It's like confusing. And the idea behind a business name Name is you've got to wow people. They've got to want to rem- it's got to be a memorable name. And sadly, for most people, because we set up on day one, we fall into this trap of let's use our name or let's use something that we're emotionally attached to because it's like our pride and joy. It's like it's like an ego boost. What I'm here to say is this. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying how many businesses out there have done the same? How many businesses do you see every day that have used initials as an example? They're not memorable. Nobody can remember initials. Are you with me? So, number one, you've chosen a name where you've connected emotion to it, not logic. We need to separate branding from emotion and we need to make it logical. These are the logical reasons why we've chosen this name, because it appeals to our target market, because it's memorable, because it says what it does on the tin. Are you with me? So number one, who came up with the name? Number two, who designed the fonts? Who came up with the colours? Who came up with the symbol or the logo? Now, for some of you, you might have might have done it yourself. Maybe you've got onto something like Fiverr.com or PeoplePerHour.com and you've given some randomer at somewhere in the world a little bit of a brief and they've come back with a logo and you go, oh, that looks nice, I'll have that. But did you know that the psychology that has to come into your logo and your branding, such as colours, is all around psychology, such as fonts, the different styles of fonts, the thickness of font, is it bold? Fonts comes into psychology. The logo on how your logo is designed or the symbol that supports your name, all that lot is psychology. So I'm asking you, who came up with all that? Because nine times out of ten, most people say, well, actually, Craig, it was me, or I got a graphic designer in, and because I've only just set up my business... I didn't have a big budget. I didn't have a budget for branding and marketing. I didn't realise it was so important at that stage. So what I did is I spent a couple hundred quid with local graphic designer I met at a networking event and he banged up this logo and this brand and these colours and I liked it and I showed it to my wife or my husband or my kids and they liked it, so we ran with it. We ran with it. Now, what we've got to understand and remember is this. That's okay on day one of you setting up your business because it gives you an identity. It gives you a name. But what I mean to say is over that time of you being established, something's happened to you and something's happened to your business. And what's happened is over that period of time to where you are today listening to this podcast, you as a person, you as an individual, you've changed. You see, you've grown and you've morphed and you've got more wool on your back. And now you're a bit more experienced when it comes to marketing. Now you're a bit more experienced when it comes to branding. So things have started to change. And as you start to grow and morph and change and become more wiser and get a little bit more wool on your back, You then take all that knowledge and you apply that into your business. So what starts to happen within your business? Your business starts to change. Your business starts to morph. Your business starts to grow. Your business is now offering different products or services than it did do on day dot on day one when you first set up. So now you've worked out that actually offering this product or service makes me no money. So you've knocked that on the head. You might have now replaced that with other products and services that you know is more profitable. It's a quicker, easier, risk-free way of making money. 
and you know you've over that time period you've now bolted other products and services on right simple examples i work with loads of plumbers when they start working with me they're doing 24 hour call outs they're doing bathroom installations but by the time they've done we're working with me they fit in gas boilers they fit in heat pumps and they fit in solar pv why because fitting heat pumps gas boilers and solar pv you'll make 10 times as much more profit in a shorter space of time than you will do fitting bathrooms and doing general plumbing works likewise with sparkies when they usually start working with me they're doing everything they're, they're doing a bit of first fixed out road for, for for the local builder or they're working with mrs jones and they're just going around to add an extra socket on in the kitchen or they're doing pat testing or they're doing all these different services now whoa whoa hang on a minute that's not going to make you any money right what's going to make you the money is getting into things like solar pv again as an example are you with me so as you start to grow and change and get more experienced, your business starts to grow and change with it. So when you start to look back at where you were on day one, setting up a business with no experience with marketing or branding, using emotion to come up with your identity rather than using logic, and you look at the products and services and where your business was on day one to where you are now today, it's changed. But the one thing that's not changed is this cheap brand that you knocked up inexperienced on day one. That's not changed. That's still with you. So your business and everything's morphing and changing and growing, but your branding's not changed with it. It still looks like you are a one man band like you did do on day one. Does that make sense? Do you get where I'm going with this? So as our business starts to evolve and change and we do, surely that old brand and that old logo that we had on day one has to change and grow with us. And if we don't, we end up with a new type of business, but the branding is still looking like a one man band, cheap old school brand that we're carrying around. And the only thing that's stopping you from improving that brand or slightly changing it or having a fresh up of it or a complete rebrand is your emotion because you're emotionally attached, attached to your branding. You see where I'm going with this? So my question to you is this. Does your business branding, your company brand, your identity, does your business brand look like where you are heading and where your business will be in 10 years time? Think about it. You've got a new vision. Your business is constantly going to be evolving. So what does that vision look like and where are you heading? And what I'm here to say to you is this. If you're heading in a specific direction and you know that your branding needs to look a certain way to attract those new target market for those new products and services, if that's the direction you're going in, does that brand that you still got that you've still got now, does that brand represent where you want to be in 10 years time? And if the answer to that is, do you know what, Craig? Now you've pointed it out to me. There's a disconnect. My brand does look a little bit one man bandy. My brand does look a little bit cheap. Maybe my I were never happy with that logo, but I went with it anyway. Do you know what? Now you've got a point, Craig. I use all my initials in my name. And how memorable is that? It's not really. Do you know what I mean? It's not It's not that memorable. I could come up with a better name, something that's going to wow people rather than just initials, maybe. So what does your business look like in 10 years' time? What direction, what path do you want to achieve that? And does your business brand represent where you're heading or does it represent where you were on day one? Now, once you've looked at your brand and once you've asked your target market, not your family, not your friends, because they might not be a target market. Once you've asked your customers or done a bit of research and you've looked into this, if the answer 
is no, then now would be the time to look at a freshen up. And it doesn't have to be a complete change in name, or, or, albeit most of the times we do change the name as well. But it doesn't have to be a change of name. It could be a slight tweak of the name. It might be just a case of, well, I need to bring my font up to a more modern day font. It might be, well, actually, I need a strap line because we, we were just like an electrical contractor doing commercial work, but now we've got MCS accredited and now we're doing domestic solar. All right, so we might need a strap line like electrical and renewable experts tagging on. Either way, your brand has got to look like where you are heading and where you want to be in 10 years' time. Because that is the first thing that your target market is presented with. When you're posting on social media, it's your business brand. When you're post, when you've got a website, it's your business brand. It's everywhere. And if that looks old school or it doesn't look like it's connected to where your business is now or where it's going, then there's a disconnect and that disconnect needs sorting out. So I want you to go away and think about your business brand and identity, and does that slightly need to change? I'm going to give you a couple of tips here on what we do when, we, when we rebrand businesses. I always, you, this is not set in stone, but I always like to go with what I call the power of three, because the power of three when it comes to branding and marketing is immense. So I've got a number of businesses and they've, nearly all of them have got three words that make the name. So example, Elite Business Academy is one of my businesses. Trades Freedom Club is another business. And my businesses tell you what they do in the name. Okay, Elite Business Academy. You know, it's elite, it's it's the top end business, it's for business owners, and it's academy, it's an academy of learning, right? Trades Freedom Club. It's for trades people to achieve freedom. And when you join us, you're joining a club, you're joining a community. I like names that says what it does in the tin. I've also got another business that's one word. It's just Leadzilla. But underneath, we've got a strap line that's got, Three words in the power of three. So it's Leadzilla. It's very memorable. Nobody ever get, forgets that, Leadzilla. And I'm guessing, I'm only guessing, me just saying the word now, Leadzilla, right? What is conjuring up? What animal, what thing, what status is conjuring up in your mind? I'm guessing some of you will be saying Godzilla, right? Exactly. And why do you think that our branding for Leadzilla is like a... A, a green colour, like a reptile colour. It's all psychology, it all comes in. But underneath the word Leadzilla, we've got marketing, automation and sales as a strap line, the power of three. So you know that Leadzilla, which is a memorable name, deals with marketing, automation and sales. Are you with me? So... Think about the power of three and how you can bring that perhaps into your business name because it 100% works. The second thing I'm going to share with you before we move on is this. When we come up with new business names for companies, I ask them to start off by writing down 50 words. And I want you to do this if you're thinking of maybe changing your name. Write down 50 words that are synonymous or, or you want associating with your business, right? And when you write these words down, I want you, I want you to come up with 50 because you'll come up with the first 10 that everybody's got. So everybody uses renewables as an example. Everybody uses heating engineer. Everybody uses construction. Everybody uses conversions. Are you with me? From concept to completion, all that stuff, right? Everybody uses it. So the first 10 you write down, you'll come up with the same as everybody else, but we don't want to be the same as everybody else. The idea behind having a business brand that wows people, that stands out is you've got to stand out over and above all your competitors. You've got to be head and shoulders above everybody else. You've got to be memorable. So you've got to do things different. 
And I always have this saying, when you're prepared to do things that other people aren't prepared to do, then you'll achieve success. So you need to do things differently to everybody else. So write down 50 words. And then what I want you to do is I want you to mix and match those 50 words by using the power of three. So bring three different words into it and see if you can come up with a name that uses all them three of those 50 words that is right for you and your business. Tip number three is once you've come up with this name and that is a challenge, that is a challenge in itself. Coming up with that name is a massive challenge. Once you've come up with a name, you've then got to make sure that there's no other limited company with that name registered at Companies House. So go to Companies House, go on their website and type in that company name and make sure nobody else has got it. Because if somebody set up a limited company with that name, you can't have it. And likewise, go on to GoDaddy.com, go to GoDaddy and type in a domain name that fits with that business name, right? And you want to be looking for a domain name that's got those words in it. So from an SEO point of view, it's good that you get that into your domain name. So they're the tips that I'm going to leave you with, with your business brand. But make sure that whatever we are presenting in front of people, the first thing that we're going to see, they look at it and they go, wow, these are whatever words you want to come up with, professional, reliable, trustworthy, honest, all these words you need to get into how that brand looks because when you present it in front of people, they're the words that you want them to be thinking, okay? So step number one is your business brand. Step Number two is your personal brand, a really big one, this, your personal brand. And what I mean by this is I believe in today's digital modern age that your personal brand, in other words, you, you personally are more important to your business than whatever you've called your business. And I know you might say, well, hang on a minute, Craig. No, surely what you call your business is most important yeah, it's mega important. We've just established that on step one. But in today's day and age, when you're on social media, when you're shooting videos, when you are on podcasts, perhaps, all this type of stuff, it's your personal branding that's actually out there that attracts people to your business. Are you with me? So it's generally you that they see first somewhere in this digital world. And then from your profile or from the link that you've added to your Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn posts, they click that and then they're over to your business website. Are you with me? So your personal brand is incredibly important. So how are you branding yourself up personally across all of your marketing? Because you need to be everywhere. You've got to be all over your social media. You've got to be on your lead magnets. You've got to be on images of you and your team on your landing page, images of you and your team on your website. If not, you become a faceless company. And in today's day and age, people don't want to deal with faceless companies. They want to know who is it they're speaking to, who's going to come out and do their quote or proposal. Who's actually going to be coming out and doing the work? And it might be that you're off the tools and it's your team that's doing the work. Right, get your team on your website. Get your team on your Facebook page. Make them introductions to your team. People want to work with companies where they know who they're dealing with and who they're speaking to. So if you look at what I do with my marketing and my branding, is I use me, Craig Wilkinson, to front up all of my businesses. And it doesn't matter what businesses, it could be DFA Online, it could be Elite Business Academy, it could be Leadzilla, it could be Trades Freedom Club. I'm at the forefront of it. And the reason why I am is I understand the power of personal branding. Because when people buy from a business, they don't buy from a business logo, do they? They're not purchasing from your business name or your fonts. They're purchasing from you. So the relationship 
between you and a customer has got to be built up through you. And I do this very, very cleverly and very, very well. Because right now, although you can't see me, because this is not a video podcast, it's an audio podcast, you are still building up a relationship with me. You still know who I am. You still know what my businesses are because you're building a relationship up with Craig. Likewise, when I shoot a, a Facebook Live, it's Craig Wilkinson that's on that Facebook Live talking. It's not my logo talking, it's me. When you go to any of our websites or landing pages, Craig Wilkinson has got photos of himself on our websites. I'm the author of a series of ebooks and guides. So I've now become an author. So with that in mind, my images are all over our lead magnets, our free ebooks that we give away. I'm everywhere because I believe that if I can build a relationship with you listening to this right now, if I build that relationship and you get to know, like, and trust me, then you may well go to one of my businesses so I can help solve one of the problems that you've got. Are you with me? And that's how it works. So in terms of your personal branding, you've got to be everywhere. Now, on my inner circle, when we cover this session off, I go through a, a, a little section where I say to him, right, I'm going to show you a series of images, right, of me. And what I want you to do is I want you to write down whatever word springs to mind when I show you an image. And I actually, um, I said to him, be honest, you won't upset me. I've got a thick skin. If you think I look a twat or a dickhead or you think I look stupid or whatever, you'll not hurt me. Tell me, because this is good feedback for me. So be honest, tell me what's the first word that springs into mind. And then what I do is I show him a series of 15 different images of me. And when they've wrote down the one word... I come to him at the end and I say, right, I want you to tell me what one word you wrote down. And again, be honest, if you think I'll could twat, <laughs> tell me I'll could twat, right? You won't offend me. So I know what I want people to think about when they see images or videos of me. I know what I want to get across in that brand. So the images that I create represent all of the words that I want people to think about the instant they see one of my images or one of my videos. Are you with me? So I say to them, right, unmute yourself and somebody tell me what are the words. And I get words like successful, professional, trustworthy, reliable, leader. Are you with me? Authority, coach, mentor. All these words are what they say. Thankfully, nobody tells me I look a dick, but they have got the opportunity. Now, all I've done is provided them with an image. I haven't told them what to think or what to say. There is no words on these images. There's no video. There's no audio. It is literally just an image. And they all come back and use words that I want to them to think about in the first place. And then I say to them, look, all I've done is simply shown you an image. That image of mine could be on Facebook. That image could be on LinkedIn. That image could be on my website. That image could be on my landing pages. That image could be in a series of ebooks. So I'm now an author. All right, that it could be the channel art for this podcast, right? That's an image. I says, all I've done is provided you with an image and you've all come back to me without any persuasion from me or cohorts in you to say certain words. You've all come back to me with the words that I want people to associate with me and my personal brand. So the point of this is, what images... What videos, what content is out there right now of you, you personally? And I'm even talking about 
the images that you might be using on maybe Facebook, that's a, a personal Facebook page of yours, where you've recently gone out and you might have got uh, pissed up on your mate stag do, dressed as emu, sound back of an Ollie Davison, drinking a bottle of Jack Daniels. Are you with me? You're putting images out across social media, and rightly or wrongly, People are going to judge you by the images and the content that you're putting out there, you personally. They're going to judge you personally. Now, I don't know about you, but as a business owner, when people see my content and photos or videos of me, I always want them to think professional, successful, trustworthy, mentor, coach, authority, all them words I want to come out. So... I don't put any content out there whatsoever that can damage my personal brand. Because if I put, even though I'm human and even though I'm just a normal person, I am very, very mindful of the content that I put out on social media or the content that I put onto my websites. Because when I want, when I look, want people to judge me, I want the content that I'm presenting to judge me the words that I've just shared with you. And nine times out of ten, I can't please everyone. There's always going to be somebody out there that thinks I'm a twat or a dick or whatever. I accept that. We can't please everyone. But 99% of people that I come into contact with said, you know what, Craig? I do trust you. I do like you. All right, you might have got a northern accent and you've got a chipped tooth and a big nose and you're not the best looking lad in the world, but that doesn't stop me from wanting to work with you. Are you with me? And this is the challenge that some of you are going to have because some of you don't want to be the front of your business. Some of you don't like the way in which you sound. Some of you have got imperfections or you think you have that are stopping you from shooting these videos. And again, look at me, I'm honest, I'm transparent. I have got a Yorkshire accent, right? I have got chipped teeth. I have got a big nose. I'm not the best looking kid in the world, but I'll tell you something, none of that is a limiting belief that's going to stop me from achieving success and where I want to get in life. I'm not perfect. I know that, but who is? So don't let you stop yourself from building and growing your personal brand. You've got to do it in today's day and age because when you're on that video calling out your target market and explaining what job you're on and how you help and benefit your customers, when you're on that video, it's you that people are buying from. It's not your logo that's talking. It's you when you write that blog article or you write that ebook, the top 10 killer mistakes people make when choosing a boiler, when you're the author of that guide, it's you that they're building a relationship up with, not your logo, not your brand, not your company identity. So I want you to look at the content you're putting out there. Is there, is there enough content, you or your team out there? If not, let's get more content out there. And second, I want you to consider coming up with 20 different words that you want associating with you personally, right? I've gone through some of the words that I want, so therefore I create content and take shots of me in certain positions, doing certain things to highlight that that's what I want people to think. So... You might be on the tools, you might be a tradesperson and you want to come across as clean and tidy. Uh, so therefore, you would have a photograph taken of you in a customer's house hoovering up and explain to people how clean and tidy you are. If you want people to think that you're approachable and that you're friendly and you get on great with your customers... Get some photos to were you shaking hands with your customer? Because that 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 represents being friendly and trustworthy, doesn't it? So all the words that you want associating with you personally, you've got to go and get videos or or images of you representing that particular word or phrase. Are you with me? And yes, I'll go and have I'll invest money into having 
photo shoots done with professional photographers. But I also sometimes don't do that. And I might say, do you know what? I need a photograph of me to go on my new uh, podcast website. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my mic and my mixer, my lighting and my green screen and my backdrop right. I'm just going to get my iPhone, set it up on a on a tripod, and then I'm just going to get a little Bluetooth device and take a photograph of myself as with, with my hands gesturing, talking into a mic, because I need a, an image quick to use on my new podcast website. So we can take these images ourselves on our smartphones or get your apprentice or another member of your team to take images. You can go out and say to your team, right, on Monday team, I'm going to come out and we're going to have a team photo. So make sure you're clean, you're tidy, you've done your hair, you've got your embroidered workwear on. I'm going to come out and I'm going to take a photograph of you, knelt down at the side of that fuse board, to, uh, putting a breaker in, Right. And just as you click that breaker in, I'm going to take some photos because we need some photos for our consumer unit page on his website. Right. That image then goes towards the consumer unit. You could be a plasterer and you could say, actually, I want a, a, a photograph of me skimming a ceiling, but I want it to I want it to be class. I'm gonna get some lighting in there so that we're getting rid of any blemishes or anything like that. So again, smarten yourself up, get your embroidered workwear on so you're not covered in plaster and dust and crap. Get your trowel, clean your trowel off, and then get that photo of you looking up at that at that ceiling, just troweling that ceiling off nice and easy. Bang, get that photo then that can go onto your website. You could be a joiner like me and you could be fit in a kitchen, let's say, and you've just routed two worktops together where you're going to join two worktops. You could get a photograph of you on your knees next to some kitchen base units with your worktop, with you with your spirit level on that worktop, looking precisely at that bubble and, and looking at that that worktop is absolutely bang level, click. You can use that photo then on your website for your kitchens. Do you see where I'm going with this? So instead of using stock images that you can buy online that everybody else is using, you know, you go to plumbing and eating websites and you can guarantee that I've seen them photos a million times before because you're all buying the same images. That's no good. That's not separating you from your competitors, is it? So get those personally branded images. And then once you've got that image, you can use it everywhere. You can use it on social media, on your website, in your eBooks, on your blogs. It goes everywhere. So write down those 20 words and then your action tasks are to go away and get those photos taken that represent those words and get them everywhere. And that way, when you are online, when you're posting things, people look at that image and then it conjures up that word in their mindset of what you want people to think. We've got to get customers to know you, like you and trust you, or potential customers, should I say. And the way in which we're going to do that is one, so far we're going to get the business brand right. And two, we're going to get your personal brand. Step number three is what I call brand authority. Brand authority. And what I mean by this is you need to be able to demonstrate and show your authority and your professionalism and your credibility more than your competitors. Because let's face it, most customers or clients are going to get three quotes. We know that right? So what sets you apart from your other two competitors? What is your authority within your trade, within your profession, within your industry? And how can we evaluate and take this authority to a whole new level, a level that your competitors haven't got? Or maybe they have got some authority, but they're not displaying it across their brand or across their marketing. And one of the things that I teach is, and what I'm, again, really good at is building that brand authority. How can I build my business brands? 
How can I build my personal brand? But then what authority have I got? Why should people trust me? What have I got that other people haven't got? So you'll hear me talking constantly about things like how I've worked with and helped over 30,000 trades business owners, how, how, how I was the original and first trades and construction coach way back in 2012 and how I set the level and the benchmark for construction and trades coaching, how I've won Yorkshire's Businessman of the Year for generating £54 million pounds worth of business for trades businesses. I'm, I'm on blog articles. I'm on, I've got this podcast. This podcast alone is authority. Are you with me? So you've got to be able to demonstrate your authority and why somebody should choose you over somebody else. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you 10 different ways in which I create my authority, but also I will coach my inner circle members for them to be able to build theirs too. So make sure you make a note of what these 10 are. And what we're looking for really is to get all 10 of these into our marketing. Because for example, if you could get all 10 of these onto your website and you've invested into your personal brand and your business brand is like off the scale, you're just going to absolutely demolish your your competitors because they're not even in the same league as you. So grab a notepad. Let's write these down. So number one, authority number one that you need to get is video testimonials. Video testimonials of your happy customers and clients telling the world how amazing, clean, tidy, on time, on budget you and your business is. And what we start to do is we start to turn our customers into a sales team so they sell your business for you without you having to do it. And you will struggle, seriously, you will struggle to find someone in any business, any sector that's got the amount of testimonials I've got because we've now got, or I've now, or my team's now got... 479, 479 video testimonials across my businesses. And you've only got to go on into our Trades Freedom Club Facebook group or head over to our Trades Freedom Club Facebook page or head over to our Trades Freedom Club website and you will see a hundred different video testimonials from tradesmen and women that I've helped to build, grow, scale, and even sell their businesses. You don't have to take my word for it. Go and listen to the hundreds of people that I've worked with. They help build my authority. So where's all your video testimonials from your happy customers and clients? Because if you haven't got them in today's day and age, you are miles behind already. So authority number one, video testimonials. Number two, reviews reviews. You've got to get as many five-star reviews as you can across multiple different directories. So for me, the main one is Google. You've got to get more Google reviews than you can your, than your competitors. One, it acts as authority and two, with it being Google, it acts for SEO purposes. But I also know some of you will be members of maybe which trusted trader or uh, some other directories, uh, trade-specific directories. So you like uh, like my hammer and my builder and, and all that lot. You need to get reviews on all them directories. So you need a review strategy to get them done. But authority number two, reviews. Number three, awards. Awards, Okay. So what awards have you won, right? Because there's loads of different awards you can apply for within, within the trades and construction industry. Absolutely loads. In fact, if you go back and listen to episode number 19, the one before here, where I interview plumbing and eating engineer Mark Wooler, right? 
Mark Wooler has now won three different awards for his plumbing and heating business, stroke renewables business. He's won three awards. He's now got them awards on his website. He's now got them awards on his Facebook. He's posted them all over social media. He's emailed his customers and his past customers that he's won these awards. So what awards have you won? Because they all help build your authority. Number four, podcasts, right? Podcasts, exactly like you're listening to now. Whether you have your own podcast, and again, our Inner Circle members, I encourage them to go and set up a podcast. And you might think, hang on a minute, Craig, I can't, I can't do a podcast on plumbing and eating. You can. Go and check out Steve Thompson at The Boiler Doctor, one of my Inner Circle members. He's just started a podcast. So there's lots and lots of my Inner Circle members that have either set up a podcast and they're now interviewing people, so they now become the authority. They've got their own podcast show. Or they are guest podcasting, like again, Mark Wooler on last week's episode. Mark's now on my podcast. So now I'm helping Mark build his authority for his business because he's guest podcasting. So what guest podcast can you get on or what podcast could you set up that will help build your authority? Number five, blog articles blog articles that you have on your website because inside a blog article we can get all that knowledge of your industry trade or profession tips of the trade mistakes to avoid all that lot can go into blog articles that sit on your website and then that's great then for you to copy that url link for that blog article and maybe go on to social media and share that so that anybody that's interested in I want to avoid these mistakes. They click that link. It's a clever way of getting people back to your ultimate sales tool, which is your website. And then whilst they're on the website, then they're watching your video testimonials, right? They're looking at your reviews. They can see that you've won an award. They can see that you've got your own podcast or you've been guesting on a podcast and that podcast episode is now sat on your website. They can also see that you are uh, an author of a series of blog articles where you're giving your valuable knowledge and information away for free. It all builds authority. Number six, guest blogs. Guest blogs, where if you can get your blog article on somebody else's website, obviously this helps build your authority. So maybe you are a Sparky and... You remember uh, uh, NICIC and you can get a blog article or an article on their website that when people click sends you back to your website, that's, that's authority building. So you can, just like you can guest podcast, you can guest blog as well and that helps build your authority. Number seven, lead magnets. A lead magnet is where you're going to give something of value away to your target market for free, usually on your website. But to get that free guide or that free ebook, they've got to give you the first name and email address that then triggers an automated email marketing campaign. Now, when they receive that ebook or that guide, again, you become the author. You are the expert. You are advising those, these people on whatever it is that you're giving away for free that's helping them to make a buying, biz, a buying decision. So you've now gained authority because you've become the author of a series of ebooks that you'll have on your website. Number eight, accreditations. Now, I'm guessing out of all of these 10 accreditations, you've probably already got them on your website because it's easy, right? And what I mean by accreditations is what organisations or governing bodies do you belong to? And therefore, what logos of theirs or branding can we put on our website or on our literature or letterheads, lead magnets, 
landing pages where their logo is on your website. And if you're a member of any organisational body, which trusted trader, uh, even Trades Freedom Club, we provide our logo to our members that you can put onto your website. Maybe you're a member of a networking group, get that on your website. Any, any body, governing body, or any association, or any club, or team, or affiliate that you belong to, get their logos on your website because it builds that authority. Number nine, publications, publications. So maybe you've been featured in your local newspaper or a local magazine. Maybe you've been f featured or interviewed for your local radio station. Maybe you've been on TV because your local news has picked up on something and you're on TV. So any type of publications where you are out there in the public domain, you need to get a copy of that. So if you're in a, a local newspaper, right, get a copy of that newspaper. Nine times out of 10, these publications are all online. You can send a link straight back to that, that article on that newspaper. Maybe you've been on TV, right, get the TV clip so it's playing on your website. Are you with me? So any type of publications helps build authority. And the final one, right, is number 10, which is what customers or clients do you work with? Now, this is probably a little bit more around the commercial side. But if you work for some of the big boys, then I would have the big boys logos on your website. So anybody that's landing on there, go flipping out. These work with like John Lewis or these work with McDonald's or these work with whoever, right? If you get their logos onto your website, people can start to see, blimey, these are who they're working with. Your authority positioning just goes through the roof. Are you with me? Now, Go and check out any of my websites, any of my landing pages, right? And you will see, I would say, seven out of these ten on every single page that I have got, right? Some you'll see all ten. Go and check out Mark Wooler, right? At Green Home Heating from episode number 19. And go and look at his website. Because Mark's been through the inner circle. So he's got video testimonials. He's got reviews. He's won awards. He's been on podcasts such as mine and other people's podcasts. He's been he's speaking at Heat Geeks, uh, their events. So he's, he's now public speaking. He's got blog articles. He's got lead magnets. He's got accreditations. Publications. He's won awards. So he's in newspapers. Are you with me? He's, he's M MCS accredited. So he's got their logos He's got all that lot across his marketing, which is building his brand authority, which is why Mark has now become one of the North number one experts when it comes to renewable energy, particularly heat pumps in the North of England. And he's built that authority. And because he's now got it, he's now being approached by even more people. Are you with me? And the more people that approach her, his authority is now starting to build bigger and bigger and bigger, which means he's now got more business. And if you listen to that episode from last week, you'll hear Mark say, listen, I'm making more profit than I've ever made before. In fact, it were 800, sorry, 486% increase in net profit over the last 12 months. That's how much his business is growing by. And he's now speaking at uh, events. He's now featured, he's featured all over it, sure, right? Because he's built his authority. And that's the whole point of this podcast, for you to go away and start to build your authority because there's that many people, I'm guessing, in a 10 square mile radius of where you're based right now that do and does what you do. So what separates you from them? What makes somebody look at your content and somebody else's and decide to use you over and above someone else. And that comes down to one word. And that one word is authority.
So if you go away and work on these three areas, yes, it can't happen overnight and you can't do all three things in a one But if you make a conscious decision to say, do you know what, Craig, I'm first of all going to look at my branding, right? And if you say, Craig, I'm happy with my brand and it's exactly where my business is going and where I'm going to be in 10 years time, that's fine. But if you've got any reservation about your brand and does it look like you want where you're going in 10 years time, now will be the time to tweak it. Number two, you can make a start straight away on your personal brand. Because your personal branding, you, you've got, you've all got smartphones, you've all got great cameras on your smartphones. What's to stop you literally tomorrow going out there and getting 10 images of you in certain poses that's going to represent you with the words that you want people to associate you and your business with? That's easy. That can be done tomorrow. So we can make a start on that. And the, thir- and the third one is how are you going to build this brand authority? How are you going to look more professional? carry more clout than your competitors. Now, I said at the beginning of this session or this podcast that all this is designed to generate you more leads, right? You invest into your branding like you invest into a website. Your website's there to generate your leads, but it'll generate you more leads if you've become the authority, So we've got to invest time, effort, and if need be, some of your money into building this brand because without the brand, you're going to struggle. It's the first thing that people see. And I know for sure that for almost all of us at some point, we've turned people off because we weren't aware of what I've just shared with you right now. If you go away and work on these three things, you will guaranteed start to generate more leads coming into your business. So therefore, the investment into your branding is worth it. And once you've built it and you've got this brand and you start getting yours and your business name touted around people, it's like a snowball effect. As soon as one person has you on a podcast, somebody else will want you on. Word will get out. Are you with me? As soon as one person sees that you... Uh, have written a series of blog articles, they'll want to know how you've done it. So you become attractive to people because your authority is greater than everybody else's. So that's what I want you to focus on and take away from this episode. I want to say a massive thank you to the thousands of people that are downloading our episodes every single week. Clearly, we're making a massive difference to people's businesses and lives by producing these free podcasts for you. And if you're a new listener, could I please ask you to consider hitting the subscribe or follow button on whatever platform you're listening to this episode on so you never miss another one of our episodes. Finally... As a reminder, if you're not a member of our Trades Freedom Club Facebook group and community, to click the link around the description within the show notes and head over to our supportive and thriving Facebook group. And remember, the results that you're looking for is in the work that you're avoiding. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch up with you on next week's episode.